welcome to another episode of SMB Sundays. My name is Alex de Jong. Today I will be taking you through all the steps that you need to take in order to get your Microsoft 365 partner environment connected with Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. Now, when Microsoft 365 Lighthouse is enabled for your organization, you have a single pane of glass to manage all your customers at once. If this video is useful to you, please like and subscribe to my channel and possibly share this with your colleagues or friends. If you have any comments or questions regarding the process described in this video, then please let me know and I'll be happy to address them. So, let's get started with Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. So, we want to make sure that we are an indirect reseller at the Microsoft Partner Program in order to get started with the Microsoft 365 Lighthouse. So what you want to do is you want to sign in into your partner.microsoft.com environment into the dashboard view. Now, from this partner.microsoft.com environment in the dashboard view, you, your account should be looking something like this. And the important button to check for is the customers button. Now, if you do not have this button in your partner center, you might be signing in with your wrong account or your Microsoft partner network account has not yet been enrolled as a indirect reseller. So this is what you need to fix first. Now, I can imagine that if you are not yet seeing the customer's environment, you want to know how to get your account registered as an indirect reseller. Luckily, here from the Quick Starts section, there is an indirect reseller enrollment view. If you follow this link, here you will find the steps that you need to take in order to get your partner account registered as indirect reseller. Now, if you scroll a little bit down, here you see a link that says Get Started as an Indirect Reseller. And of course, you need to be sure to read the program environment first in order to make sure that you are not agreeing to agreements with Microsoft that you do not want to follow up to. Now, this is as far as I can show you the environment. From here, you need to make sure that your account, your Microsoft Partner Network account, is registered as Indirect Reseller. That allows us to go into this Customers View. If you click that link for customers view, the partner center customer list is going to be shown. Here we see an environment where I so far have registered one single demo tenant to be listed as a customer. Now I can imagine that you want your customers to be in this list because if your customers are in this list, they will automatically be enrolled into the Microsoft 365 Lighthouse environment. Now, to make sure that you have an account here that is registered as one of your customers, you need to click the link for request a reseller relationship. This will show a link and that link is going to be used to sign in into your customers admin.microsoft.com environment to enroll your Microsoft Partner environment as their indirect reseller. That is what is going to be configured in this next step. Now, in order to get this going, we need to make sure that we have a customer ready for this. And in my environment, I have a couple of demo tenants. So I'm going to choose this demo tenant here that I want to configure. So from another profile in, the, uh, in Microsoft Edge, I'm now signed in into this demo tenant. Now from here, we could go into billing and then we can check, for example, in our uh, licenses to see if that environment has some licenses assigned. Here we see, for example, the, uh, the demo licenses that I have been creating. Um, then we could check in settings, 
we could check the partner relationships. And with partner relationships, you can check whether or not this demo environment has been connected to a Microsoft partner. Here we see that this demo environment is not yet listed. Now, one of the things that I want to make sure before I enroll this environment is that I want to make sure that this environment has a unique name in its tenant. Um, now, in my case, I have this demo tenant listed and chances are big that my second demo tenant has some sort of a similar situation when it comes to the naming. It's very important to make sure that your customers all have a different name because they might show up the same here and that would sort of, well, make it harder to identify to what customer you are working with. And also from within the Microsoft 365 Lighthouse environment, you want to be careful not getting with the same company names. So there should be some way to identify this. Now, what I want to do in this environment for this partner, I want to be sure that I am working with a different name. So what I want to do is I want to sign in into the Azure Active Directory portal for that customer. And for now, I'm going to skip the multi-factor authentication step. Here we see under Active Directory that we have a company name called MS365BP2203, which is unique enough for me here. But if that is not the case, you may want to go and rename that domain here. So to rename your Azure Active Directory tenant, you want to be in properties. And here we can go under tenant properties and rename for now this specific tenant. So with this demo tenant listed, we can now go and start to invite process to invite that customer into your partner environment. So what you want to do is you want to go and click the link for request a reseller relationship. And here you'll see that there is a, um, there is a solution that gets you this link here. So what I can do is we can take this link, maybe copy this and connect this to your customer. For now, I just want to switch the profile and then paste this link in the, in the environment. From that customer's environment, you will now see that it is heading into the partner relationships section for that demo tenant I have here. And from here, I can just accept the environment. So with this, I can say that I authorize the partner environment to become a global admin and a help desk admin for the environment. And I'm going to authorize this. And second, you need to authorize that you have read and understood the customer agreement, just like that. So then you can so go and say, hey, I'm going to accept and authorize from the customer's perspective. And once this is done, the partner relationship is being shown here in the beginning. It says that it's uh, that it's fixed now. Um, and but the page here still says that you do not have a partner. You may want to refresh. This could typically take a little while, but for now it seems to be working quite all right here. And with that, this new customer is now added into the partner network customer relationship. So from here, if I check out the if I check out this list, I can now see that my new customer is listed here. The primary domain name is here, and for every customer you can get some overall information. It shows a little bit on the licenses that you may have and what kind of services we have. And from here we could go and manage that customer's environment because our partner network has the administrative privileges. However, the goal of course is to work with Microsoft 365 Lighthouse because that makes life for management way more easy. So in order to get that done, let me switch back to my partner environment and then I want to go and 
select this URL here, lighthouse.microsoft.com. If we sign in into lighthouse.microsoft.com, for the first time, it may take up to 48 hours before everything is all set up for you. When you sign in for the first time, it will go and it will start to provisioning the entire environment for you. And that's why you need to make sure that, uh, well, you, you have to have some patience here, right? Now, when this is done, one of the things that you want to see here under tenants is the tenants that you are managing. And, the re and, and it may take a little while before a newly added tenant is added into this list. Um, and that also could take 48 hours. So you really want to be sure to, well, be patient here again. Um, this is also the main reason that I also pre-populated my environment with at least one tenant, because otherwise this demo would be taking a long, long time. Now, for now, we have this one tenant listed. We can also select this tenant, and it shows a little bit on that demo environment. Here we see, for example, the active users and devices here, um, changes in activity, maybe um, the domain name, the, uh, the location of the solution, maybe add some contact information here if you want. Then under the deployment plan, it actually helps you a little bit on the different steps that you need to take in order to get working with the Lighthouse, uh, with the customer's tenant environment from Microsoft Lighthouse. So here we see a couple of things that we yet have to use or create for that tenant. Now you can go and take all of these steps one by one. So if you want to configure a device compliance policy for Windows 10 and later, you can take that link. It will then open up this tenant and the environment. And here we could go and say, hey, maybe I want to address this or I want to plan this. Or you can also review and deploy your actions here. So this gives me some info on what is going to be done. And if we take this, we can go and say, hey, we want to test these settings without deployment. Or we can just, you know, make this happen. Um, now it will create a display name for the policies that we are going to create in this case. And then, well, everything that is being set is all being set from one single location. And just like that, you can go through more of those deployment steps. And this will automatically push settings towards your tenant from the customer. So now, instead of having to connect to its tenant's environment and make all the changes manually there, you can pretty easily go through all of these steps straight from this portal. Now, that is not all of it. Next, you could, for example, also check out the users that we have. It doesn't just show a list of users. You could start, start searching for users based on their display name or their user principal name. So if I want to check out that environment for the customer, we could go into users, see what kind of demo user I have. I created something called mod admin. Uh, let me just take this. Uh, let me take this to search with in this case. So let's copy that. And then if I'm searching for a specific user, we can just go press enter. At this point, oh, by the way, this user does not exist yet. Um, be, well, because the tenant that I just added is not yet in this portal, takes a little while. So I may need to search for a user for a tenant that I actually do, that I actually do work with. Or I can just start searching with certain names here. And you can see that this user does exist in a certain tenant. And from here, we can go and manage this user a little bit. For example, we could block sign-in or reset password. It's limited functionality, but it, it shows. If you have customers that use tenants with Azure Active Directory Premium Plan 2, you can even identify risky users, users that are at risk. Um, Multi-factor authentication settings could be configured. So we have... In this tenant, seven users and seven users are not capable of multi-factor authentication and there is no conditional access policies related to this as well. And we can also set up some password reset solutions for the users. Device management, which basically means what do we do with Intune here? 
So do we have create did we create compliance policies or work that we work with devices? Um, the policies that we want to set up are based on operating systems. We can do some filtering and settings. Then under threat management, we can see what Microsoft Defender has been up to. So threats and antivirus protection is here. And if you want to easily set up a lot of security in your tenant environments, you can create baselines. And these baselines are nice to make sure that you can push to all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, uh, customers here. So based on these baselines, you can see that these uh, well deployment steps have been created. Microsoft has created this baseline. In this case, it, it helps you to get started. If your customers are making use of Windows 365, they're shown here. If there's any cloud PCs, they're shown here um, that you can go and configure. And also very useful from this central location, you can also see if Microsoft in Azure and Microsoft 365 is having some issues. And from here, we can then easily identify if there's something that we need to talk to to our customers or if customers bringing in support tickets then you can explain what is going on and how you can well help these users out from within audit logging you can check whatever has been going on in those tenants and who has been making some changes there and this is how you can get started with microsoft 365 lighthouse Hopefully this has been a useful video to you. If you find this useful, please like and share this video. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to be notified on any new videos that I post in the SMB Sundays series. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time at SMB Sundays.